Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Hagerstown. We are so glad that you are here with us today, and we are ready to celebrate the joy and the love that we all have. I wake up and the sun is shining, makes the world look bright. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. A song of praise, the birds are singing, singing with all their might. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. Of the joy and the love come into my life today. All of the joy and the love into my life today. My heart is full, my eyes are open, everything is new. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. There's just one presence and one power, only love is true. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. All of the joy and the love into my life today. All of the joy and the love into my life today. A spring of healing light is risen, risen within my soul. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. I now am well, I now am healthy, I now am healed and whole. And all of the joy and the love come into my life today. Of the joy and the love into my life today. All of the joy and the love into my life today. All of the joy and the love into my life today. All of the joy and the love into my life today into my life today come into my life today come into my life today yes good morning and welcome to unity of hagerstown it's great to see each and every one of you and for our our friends visiting us virtually we're happy that you are taking the time out to join us Welcome, welcome. Let's begin as we always begin with an opening prayer. I invite you to join me in this sacred activity. Take a nice deep breath, and as we exhale, we can allow our bodies to relax, our thoughts to calm down, and our hearts to open as we recognize that there is only one life, one presence, one power, God the good and this life and this presence moves through us as us so we allow a greater understanding of who we are and how we are connected how there is only one and so it is amen i invite you to join me in our mission statement together. Unity of Hagerstown, a welcoming community, embraces spiritual awakening through affirmative prayer and meditation, creating a positive path of abundant living for all. And now we have the reading of the daily word. Oh, let's have a song first and come back to the daily word. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, Mother God, flowing through our hearts, we give thanks for the bread of our lives, for the hands in the earth and the fruit of your womb. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, thank you for this day, for the love that you wash over me. And this joy in my heart I will share with the world. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, flowing through our hearts, we give thanks for the bread of our lives, for the hands in the earth and the fruit of your womb. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, thank you for this day. Oh, Mother God, thank you for this day, for the love that you wash over me. And this joy in my heart I will share with the world. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God. Flowing through our hearts, we give thanks for the bread of our lives, for the hands in the earth and the fruit of your womb. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Oh, Mother God, blessed be. Thank you, Brent and Patty, for such a beautiful song. And now we'll have the reading of the Daily Word with Sharon. Ben, um, and as she makes her way up, wait a second, get back to the screen, Sandy. There we go. Um, just to let you know that Unity has a new app, B.Unity. If you'd like to get the Daily Word and be able to text Silent Unity all on the same app, then you can find that, I guess, through unity.org. You would have to have a subscription to the Daily Word, though, in order to get that, that portion of it. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Sunday, April 16th, and the word for today is world peace. I live my vision for a peaceful world. To bring about peace in the world, I begin by paying attention to my first reaction when I feel I have been treated unjustly. I do not deny my feelings, but neither do I allow anger, envy, or other negative feelings to take control of my response. I feel my feelings, but I remain committed to living the truth I know. Regardless of behavior, Every person is a divine being, a living expression of God. I call upon my divine facilities or faculties of love, faith, and strength to guide my next steps. No matter how another responds, I remain centered in God. My efforts make a difference. Peace between individuals creates peace within families, in communities, and among the nations of the world. The scripture is, the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. Isaiah 32, 17. And please repeat the, uh, the daily word message. I live my vision for peaceful world. 
take it into your hearts and breathe. I live my vision for, for a, a peaceful, peaceful world. world. Thank you, Sharon. We have an opportunity to greet our neighbors and, as always, be very mindful of how they may want to be greeted. So if you're a hugger, please ask permission or check and see if it's okay first. Um, and if you're not a hugger, it is perfectly all right. In fact, we want you to say, no thanks, and just put your hand out or however you'd rather be greeted. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable in the least. So go ahead, greet your neighbors for a bit. And if you're joining us on Facebook, please feel free to put your comments, uh, your greeting on the comment section. We love you. We love you. It's not as effective now, is it? Thank you so much for listening to the bell because I know the temptation is there to do more than just a greeting, isn't it? We, we want to tell our life story. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the things I love about this community, the, the welcoming and the, the authenticity that everyone has. So, um, hmm. Get my glasses on. So Howard Thurman the theologian, philosopher, had an early brush with the divine when he was 11, 10 or 11 years old. He was looking up at the sky at Halley's Comet in 1910 with his mother. And at first, well, you know, first of all, let's think about the sky in 1910. It would have been brilliant because not so much land land light, yeah, not much pollution, yeah, it would have been wonderful. But at first he was really scared because there had been so much talk before that of, of what, if the, what if the comet falls to the earth? What if this and what if that? And it was terrifying for a young boy. But his mother was calm and reassuring and, and let him know that God would keep them safe. And something shifted within uh, young Thurman's heart in his mind. And he experienced, after the fear left, he experienced a oneness with that comet. And he moved into this awe of that which created and controlled the comet. Later, years later, he reflected upon that moment and he gave a term to it, the givenness of God. The givenness of God. He believed, and I do too, that every heart hungers to have this connection with the givenness of God. Today we're going to look at Earth Day began more than 50 years ago, and most of us are familiar with it. It's a time to educate and rededicate ourselves to the stewardship of the earth. And I want to tell you that a lot of what I'm going to say is based on Scott Aubrey's work. Scott Aubrey tells us that at its base, base ecological awareness is spiritual. It is a return to the simple, profound respect for and responsibility to the earth that our ancestors knew and practiced. Ecological philosophy, like spiritual philosophy, teaches that we are all one. We are, we are interconnected. No matter how deeply we look at the fabric of material being, whether it's the biological level, the chemical level, the subatomic level, we see that life forms are interdependent and co-evolving. 
We grow together, my friends. Every human effort, civilization, thought, spiritual insight requires and is supported by the whole of life. Songwriter and poet Robert Hunter said that in nature there is no such thing as a clash of colors. The more carefully you look, the deeper the subtleties of harmony. It is not so much that things flow into each other or around each other like jigsaw puzzle pieces. Rather, it's that there's only one thing out there and somehow, miraculously, it is in here as well. Hunt goes on, Hunter goes on to say, at the furthest wavelength of thought, the sea and the wind and the trees and sand are me. It is a thought that blinks into the mind like a giant laughing eye. I kind of love that image. <laughs> Many of you probably know that Taoism is based on the notion that we stay in sacred balance with the Tao, the, the, the oneness, the indivisible unity by observing and following the natural way, world and the ways of the natural world. It's written, the highest good is like water. Water gives light to the 10,000 things and does not strive. Indigenous people for thousands and thousands of years have taught the same thing. God is nature. Nature is God. In the Middle Ages, St. Hildegard heard the voice of spirit saying, I am that living and fiery essence of the divine substance that flows in the beauty of the fields. I shine in the water. I burn in the sun and the moon and the stars. Mine is the mysterious force of the invisible wind. I sustain the breath of all living. I breathe in the flowers. And when the waters flow like living things, it is I. So we honor this beautiful green and blue isle of planet that we inhabit. And we can see how our stewardship of it not only keeps the planet vital, but it regenerates everything, ourselves included. You know, when I go to the beach, I like to wake up early. Well, you know, I wake up early anyway. But <laughs> when, I, when I go to the beach, I wake up purposefully to see the sunrise. Yeah. Now, some of you are, may not be early risers, but perhaps you've had the experience of, of laying awake in bed in, in, in the morning and hearing the birds sing. Both of them bring about that feeling that it's a brand new day. And the entire atmosphere, atmosphere feels kind of fresh and rejuvenated. That is the forever young experience we are talking about here. The greening that Hildegard called, the givenness of God that Thurman na named it. It's about how we can keep our lives and our world in that vibration. In the book of Genesis, when God gazed upon all that God had created, the stars in the sky, the oceans teeming with life, the birds in the air, all living creatures wandering around about the land, God declared it to be very good. Hildegard tells us, glance at the sun, see the moon and the stars, gaze at the beauty of earth's greening. Now think, what delight God gives to humankind with all these things. Through the goodness of creation, God heals and restores. You know, the founder of the Sierra Club, John Muir, knew this. He, he held this to be true. He said, everyone needs beauty as well as bread. Places to pray in and play in where nature may heal body and soul alike. It's taught in the Islamic tradition as well. The prophet said the earth has been created as a mosque and as a means of purification. Wherever we are standing is holy ground. We are part of the one. The earth is the footstool of the Most High. Erwin Schrodinger, Nobel Prize winning physicist, tells us you can throw yourself 
flat on the ground, stretched out upon Mother Earth with a certain conviction that you are one with her and she with you. You are as firmly established, as invulnerable as she, indeed a thousand times firmer and more invulnerable. As surely as she will engulf you tomorrow, so surely will she bring you forth anew. He goes on to say, and not merely someday, now, today, every day she is bringing you forth, not once, but thousands of times. So it isn't just about recycling, although that is important. In fact, I heard of a woman who was so devoted to recycling that she wouldn't even consider dating a, a man unless he had been married before. Sorry. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate that because I thought it was funny too. <laughs> okay, so Mother Earth is sacred ground because this is a spiritual universe. All is sacred. All is part of the one life. There is nothing that can be separated out. In the dust, during the Dust Bowls of the 30s, did you know that the dust from Oklahoma and Texas went around the world three times? That's amazing. And the molecules that we are breathing today were once breathed by Einstein and Joan of Arc and Jesus. Can you wrap your head around that? When we are part of the whole, when we pollute a stream here, we are polluting the whole. When if I am thinking thoughts that are demeaning to myself or to another child of God, I am demeaning all children of God. Earth Day is an opportunity for us to remember our wholeness, not just our individual wholeness, but our wholeness as one. To love this physical life in which we live and move and have our being here. We can honor the environment by taking on the same nature of this one life. Ernest Holmes tells us life is one perfect wholeness. The universe is a unit, a unit. God is one. There is a subtle something which runs through all things, that energy without which nothing can be energized, that life without which nothing can live, that power without which nothing can move, and that spirit without which nothing can be is God. This is what the mystics have been telling us for centuries, and it is con confirmed by quantum physics, which say that everything that exists in the universe, all life, all substance, is interrelated, interdependent. And you know, our elder brother Jesus tells us this as well. He had a message of oneness. He said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. For when you do these things to the least of my brethren, you do it unto me. My friends, I don't believe that term brethren is limited to male human beings. I believe it's not limited to male or female human beings. I believe it is covering all of creation. So we have the opportunity every day, in fact, every minute of every day, to, to bring forth from our own inner resources, our, our own spirituality, to allow it to spill over out of our own consciousness and bless Mother Earth and bless each other. There is power in that blessing. It isn't merely about recycling. It's about renewal where we can have a renaissance experience, an, an awakening, or a reawakening, I should say. It's a renewal of our consciousness that leads to permanent solutions and permanent healings. It's also about giving. Buckminster Fuller told us that on this spaceship Earth, there are no passengers, only crew. And we're not the pilot, okay? <laughs> We are all the chaplain. We are here to nurture each other, to be a midwife wife to, the earth, to the earth, to bring new life forward. Reverence for the earth is required, I believe, for spiritual practice, as well as reverence for each other, reverence for ourselves. 
you know, we can have our direct, everybody can have our a direct, immediate experience of spirit, like Howard Thurman did in witnessing the comet. We can go within and hear that still, small voice of spirit that spoke to Hildegard. I am that which sends forth all sparks of life. I am that living and fiery essence of the divine substance that flows in the beauty of the fields. I shine in the waters. I burn in the sun and the moon and the stars. I sustain the breath of all living. I breathe the breath of life in the flowers and grass and trees and in you. And when you observe the waters flowing like a living thing, it is I. And it is you. Let's move into a time of meditation now. I invite you to adjust your position as needed to begin paying attention to your breath. Allow your body to relax. Allow your thoughts to calm down. If you find yourself becoming engaged with a particular thought, maybe you can picture it just flowing by you on a stream. We don't need to go running after the thoughts. Allow your heart to open. Allow this time to be a time of blessing. seeing the goodness of God manifesting as each person here as each creature on earth as each bird in the sky all the life that is teeming on this planet and beyond the goodness of God this may take a spiritual lens to see this in other words we see not with our personality but through righteous seeing or right mindedness knowing that we are Part of the whole. As we move into a time of silence, I invite you to keep your focus either on your breath, your heart space, or on a short affirmation. Perhaps just simply God is. And then with each exhale, you can add to that. God is love.
And as we continue to sit restfully, I invite Brent and Patty to, or Patty to <laughs> share, share a song. When I saw along that open water, something opened in my soul. I felt the peace in the beauty of all that is reminding me all is one all is round all is full all is well all is whole when I saw all that open water, something opened in my soul. I felt the peace in the beauty of all that is reminding me all is one all is round all is full all is well all is whole I invite you to join me in our affirmation together. Wherever I am, I stand on holy ground, for I am the presence of God. And let's join together again for our offertory prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for the abundance in my life. And when you're done passing the basket and you want to stand up, you might want to on this one. I am grateful, grateful to, to be. be. 
I am grateful to be. Oh, yes. Please be seated. Yes. Whew. Yeah, that's got to be one of my favorites that you do. I, I know. <laughs> okay, today we have our healing share after our little snack and chat time. So if you'd like to experience Reiki and perhaps other mo healing modalities or you'd like to, uh, to give of your, your talents then, or gifts, I would invite you to stick around for that. It is on a love offering base. A suggested love offering would be about $10, but, you know, feel free to put as much as you want. And then on the 19th, which is this coming Wednesday, we have our Remembrance Gathering. That will be at 7 p.m. On the 21st, which is this Friday, we're having dinner and a movie. And we are asking for a prepayment. Um, you know, so if you're planning on coming, please pay ahead of time so that we know that you are coming. The movie, is, we have two short films to show. One is featuring Robin Wall Kimmerer. Or is it Kimmerer Wall? Oh, gosh, my mind's gone blank now. <laughs> Wall Kimmerer, okay. Um, and she takes you, on, the viewer, on a little walk through the woods near her and just shares of all of her great knowledge and her, her spiritual background, too. She's a, I forget which tribe, the American Indians, that she is, but she shares that, and she's also got such a depth of wisdom that she shares along this path. And the other short film is a, uh, like a five-minute sh five minute film on pollinators, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's, abso it's by Louis, um, the guy who does the stop-motion films. I don't know if you know this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Paula. And then next Sunday, we have our annual plant exchange. This is totally free. If you have perennials that you'd like to divide and bring up and share, please do. If you need perennials in your, in your yard and you see something that you want, just take them. There's no charge at all. Just take it. On the first Wednesday of May, we have our sound bath with beautiful Sabrina. We also have ongoing Tuesdays yoga which is fantastic. If you haven't tried it and you're interested, in it, please come out. It's so good, and it's also good for you. We have it with the beautiful Sandy Morell, and we also have an upcoming retreat, Save the Date. It's a day retreat on the second Saturday of May. The Hark Hike, which is just there for you to you know, if you're interested in, I was thinking maybe we could go as a team this year. Anybody want to do a, uh, what is a, what did we do last year, Patty? A 10K. Yeah, we did 10K, which is about a little over six miles. We're just walking it. We're not running it. <laughs> you know, so let me know about that. And then the Zion Soup Kitchen is coming around again, as is Holly Plays. So if you're interested in helping out with either one of these outreach um, endeavors, I invite you to. There's a, a sign-up sheet for the soup kitchen going around. Wow. Oh, wait, <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> we have a, a Native American flute workshop and potluck on the last Sunday of this month with uh, Armand and Angelina. They will also be doing the service. They, 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 they come in with so much energy, so much spiritual wisdom, so much talent as well. They're both gifted musicians. And then the, the Monday after that, the 1st of May, they're doing a New Thought musical variety show. Angelina is trained in opera, and uh, Armand is trained in a lot of things. <laughs> so so they, co they come in, they bring their own experience, you know, for us to sh enjoy. So mark your calendars for those two as well. Okay, at this point, we're going to say goodbye to our beloved Facebook friends. We love you. We see the Christ that you are. Yes, if you're in the first couple rows, if you want to wave goodbye, that would be great. But yep, at, at the camera, yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it looks like we're off camera.